I want to start by apologizing somewhat that this is another lecture video. I understand lecture videos um, on this channel, it's a love-hate thing. You either love them or you hate them. There's just no, there's no middle ground. Black and white, um, Republican, Democrat, positive, negative, whatever. Um, so the reason I'm doing this as another lecture video, uh, among other reasons, but the biggest one, um, I'm in no shape to appear in front of a camera right now. I borrowed a camera from one of my roommates, so I've got one, but it was a pretty craptastic weekend, and um, yeah, it looked like I either won a fight or lost a fight, depending on how you look at it. So, not really, not really up to that today. Uh, the other thing, and you could probably tell this by what I was just saying there, um, there will be some strong language during this, so if that offends you, well, you might want to bail out now. Now, it's not going to be Mike Phillips' level of uh, strong language, but it's going to be there. So, y'all been warned. Okay, let's start with something topical, and the whole thing that kind of kicked off the idea for this episode. Um, did you guys catch the Packer game Monday night? Um, for those of you outside of America, and pretty much inside too, depending... The National Football League has been having a lockout with their referees. They had a dispute about contracts and all that, and negotiations kind of fell apart before the season, so the NFL said, you know what, just don't come to work. And they've been using replacement referees, or as we've been calling them in Wisconsin here all day today, scrubs. Yeah, I'm living in Wisconsin, and is talking about the Packers game. To say that it was controversial in this town would be really, really understating it. Uh, what happened was, essentially, in the last the last play of the game, um, they threw a Hail Mary pass, some stuff happened in the end zone, it was very controversial because they called for a, um, they, they called for an instant replay, but they really couldn't. Um, and the accusations are that these referees don't know what the hell they're doing, they're just scrubs, get them out of here, get the real refs in here. But the reason I mention all this, and this is just kind of window dressing to to kind of point this out. On Packers.com, which is the Green Bay Packers official website, they have an, a section called Ask Vic. And today they have a thing called That's It, J That's It, Let It Out, Folks. And it's basically responses from uh, Packer fans. Uh, the first one, the first one comes from Ron from Roberts, uh, Roberts, Wisconsin. And he's saying the Seattle Seahawks should be embarrassed. What are they teaching our kids? Remember that commercial about sportsmanship with the kid that told the truth about touching the ball before it went out of bounds? The NFL has wrecked the experience for me and I believe most of the nation. Now, there's a reason I mention this. There's a whole there's a reason I'm putting all this out there. And that is because there's this lie that we tell ourselves and we tell our kids and we tell the next generation that sports is about sportsmanship and it's not. If all sports were about sportsmanship, we wouldn't need rules. We wouldn't need referees. We wouldn't need any of this stuff. Let's face it. These guys do what they do, but I'm going to go into all this in a moment here. But also, this does fall into the paintball realm here. Because, yeah, it's a paintball show. We're going to talk about it. Sportsmanship and paintball does not exist. Yeah, I just heard a bunch of people firing up their keyboards right now. But I'm going to ask you guys, hold off. Let me state my piece, and then you can feel free to uh, to rake me over the coals. And actually, if you don't agree with me, that's fine. Please disagree with me. Make comments in the comment section. Make a response video. I encourage this. We're about sparking dis debate and discussion here, not just you know bobbling your head up and down and going, "Wow, he's so right." So just put it out there. Hear me out, and then re rebut me on what I'm talking about, not on just the statement. We don't. This is not a soundbite, guys. Okay, so where do I get off saying that paintball has no sportsmanship in it? Doesn't. Well, let me start by going back in the past. Let's talk about the rose-colored goggle effect, if you will. When you hear people talk about paintball in the old days, they say paintball was a sport of honor, was a sport of, uh, of good sportsmanship. It wasn't. When I started playing in '89. People were talking about the good old days and how it was such better back then. And they actually had, um, I mean, over the years there's been a lot of uh, movements to 
bring sportsmanship into the game. Um, most, the most recent one I can think of is the straight baller one. But there was um, there was a patch that somebody was selling that it is basically the anti-cheater patch. Um, there's been all these things all along because there really has been no sportsmanship in paintball. Keep in mind, every rule that's in the rule book exists because somebody did something that was deemed unfair at one point or another. There's a great anecdote about the first game ever played. The absolute first game. They were writing up the rules for it. And I, I, I think I read this in the uh, in the Complete Guide to Paintball, actually. Uh, or no, it was like AP, it was one of those. They were talking to one of the originators. And what he said was that uh, he got a phone call from one of the people invited to the game. And the guy said, you might as well just pack it up. I've won already because uh, you don't have any rules about what you can wear. So I'm just going to wear a padded neoprene suit underneath my camouflage. No paintball is going to break on me. Now, he, he obviously did not do that, but the fact was that he was thinking about this. So, I understand why he was thinking about it, too. I mean, it was one of those preventative things. But the point is that ever since the first game, they had to compensate for this. Do you ever wonder why tournament player tournament play a lot has to, you have to wear long sleeve t-shirts? That's because back in the 90s, there was at least one team that showed up to a tournament wearing camouflage t-shirts bare arms and they would Vaseline all the way down their arms so that if a paintball hit them it would either slide right off or they could easily wipe the hit. And we could talk about things like barrel fencing too or freight training. Actually freight training I will bring up because I've seen I've seen a, a scenario team do that at uh, Living Legends 2 and at Living Legends 5. I watched a scenario team do, do an, an old NPPL style freight train and all I could do is just sta sit in amazement of wow that was amazing. The freight train, basically it's um, five guys running down a trail in a straight line. The first guy takes all the hits and he just keeps on plowing through because hey the referee has to pull my armband before I'm out. And then everybody else behind them basically shoots, them, shoots everybody up and then you just argue with the referees about what happened. And as you're arguing with the referees, somebody who doesn't have paint on them goes, get, goes and gets the flag. We can even talk about some of the old school game fixing. Uh, so this is a little bit before my time Although some of the local tournaments still did this, to which they would actually change the rules of an event mid-event so that their home team could win, so that the field did not have to pay out with the, uh, what, what they promised. I've actually seen one team um, standing at the start box looking at the referee and saying, so what are the rules for this game now? Um, you guys have changed them three times. It's obvious you don't want us to win. Just, you know, you could just say it outright. I can even talk about the fixing events. Um, another one that was back in the late 90s. It was, uh, some, it was almost common. Team A would be playing against Team B. Team A would want to uh, would be really close to getting into the finals. So they would approach Team B before the game began and said, Hey, you know, we know you're an upstart team. We have some good sponsors, and we'll put in a word for you. We'll get you sponsorship if you'll roll for us. If you'll just roll over and let us win. And a lot of teams got sponsorship that way, or got better sponsorship that way. Yes, it's documented. Yes, it happened. And if you really want to have fun with it, if you can find Pete Robinson, ask him about it. I could also talk about some of the limited paint events from the uh, experimental days of the 90s, where some, some places tried to do a limited paint event, and what they found were that teams were going onto the field and hiding pods so that they could use them in mid-game. And I'm going to really try to avoid trotting out the Jeremy Psalm incident. I might have to bring that up later though, but um, yeah. The only difference is that way back in the day nobody had a camera. And there's an old saying that you take more pictures at a wedding than a funeral. We tend to remember the good stuff over the bad stuff. But the bad stuff still happens. And it was still there. We just tend to gloss over it because, well, you know, the old days were better. It was cooler when the game was played with 12 grams and PGPs. So let's talk a little bit about the modern game. Well, the reality is in the modern game there is no sportsmanship. I know I'm going to bring up the T word, tournaments. Yep, and I can already see people just, you know, rolling their eyes, but it's, it's a joke, guys. Second place is the first loser. How many times have you heard that? 
if you are an honest tournament player, you don't win these events. Simply put, you have to be a cheater to win these events. And I know people are going to be screaming, screaming at the monitor right now about, oh, this team is clean, this team is clean, that team is clean. No. No. If you are a tournament player, you know how to cheat, and you will use it when you need to if you think it will give you an advantage. Simply put. And even if it doesn't have to be blatant cheating, it could be just things that are unsportsmanlike conduct. I have been told, and I have had tournament players tell me directly to my face, that they will light up opponents to intimidate them for future matches. Or they're going to send a message to the teams playing in the rest of the tournament that, oh, those guys just light you up the entire, the entire game. We're punishing you for taking the field. This is what they actually, the, the term they used, punishing you for taking the field against them. Which explains a lot about e-guns, now that I think about it. Explains a lot about padded jerseys, too. I mean, one player has even outright told me that the most fun he has playing the game of paintball is if he can make a guy pack his gear and go home. That's what he wants you to do. He wants you to leave. He wants to piss you off so much that he wants you to leave. He doesn't want you there because that's one less opponent he's going to have to deal with. That's one more victory in his pocket. Tournament players also have told me it's not their job to enforce the rules. It's, well, from their perspective, it's my job to win the game. All costs, man. You know, do what you got to do. Win the game. If it means I have to argue with another guy, if I have to intimidate the other guy, if I have to assault a ref or a player, whatever, man. You know, my job is to win. Leave the rule, that rule stuff, that goes to the, the, the refs. I don't care about that. I'm just here to win. And the one big, big thing that cannot be avoided in tournament play. Tournament refs are not professional. Most of the time, it's going to be players who are playing at other events. So, essentially, paintball has always been what the NFL is going through now. Except we consider this to be the norm, and we're okay with that. Except, of course, when you get situations in which people feel like, oh, well, you're just calling this team good because you're going to be playing against them, or you're giving this team favorable calls because two tournaments ago they gave you favorable calls. Because a lot of the referees are also the players in the same tournament, kind of a messed up situation. Okay, so I can hear people say, well, I don't play tournaments. Well, scenario play is the new tourney ball. We know this. I can establish this, that scenario play has become the new tourney ball. You've got a lot of companies who are releasing e-guns specifically for the tactical market. Stuff like the, uh, what is it, the Etha, I think it is. A couple other guns. They're bringing this high firepower into the game so that people can do in the woods what they've been doing on the speedball fields. And I will grant, history shows that firepower as a strategy works. But one of the reasons that a game is so exciting is people overcoming the rules limitations and without having to break them. I'm just saying on that one. It also creates an arms race in the woods that, you know, you show up with a Tipman, there's no point in even playing. I can't match these guys. I can't spend that much money. Why am I going to show up to this scenario? We can't win. They're here to win. They're here to punish me. They're here to light me up. The other thing I noticed too, uh, scenario teams, they're wearing brighter uniforms. On one hand, I think they're doing this so they can be seen. And you could argue that, oh, they just want to be seen by their teammates. They want to be seen by everybody else. And I think it's to be seen by cameramen. It's not about the game, it's about getting sponsorships. And I can already hear people yelling, oh, my, my team, you team, me out. That's you guys. Special little snowflake patrol. But I also believe that a lot of these guys wear bright jerseys so they can look like referees. If you see somebody in the woods wearing a bright yellow jersey, you're going to pause a half a second, maybe a second, instead of shooting at the guy because nobody wants to shoot the ref. I mean, that's just not cool, right? That one second, that half second pause, that can be 6 to 20 paintballs in the air at you that they get free. And I've seen it all too commonplace. And this is even bringing up some of the special weapon stuff, like tankers. A lot of the guys driving tanks, they are the worst sports ever. Now, some of them are cool. Again, this, I'm not speaking in absolutes. I'm not, I'm not throwing the blanket out and saying this is everyone. But I have seen tankers damn near run people over 
I have seen people damn near try to kill people in the tank. Bad sports. They're playing. To, they're they're playing above the law. They're playing above the letter of the law. Okay, as so I can hear more people saying, "Well, I don't play scenarios, and I don't play turning ball. I play rec." Well, you're still seeing that mentality in the rec game now. Last time I went to go play in the woods, I was playing at this local field here, um, and they were doing a newbie day. It was new players who would get a would get free gun. They'd get a couple hundred rounds for free. It was to get people involved in the sport. Let's have some fun. Let's let's bring some new people out. Bring some new blood into this. And I figured, okay, this is pretty much the only time I can go because it's a midweek session. I'll go. And specifically brought all the low tech gear and everything, having fun. Apparently a couple of the kids didn't get the message because they showed up with e-guns and the attitudes to match it. And at one point, one of them, um, I got shot, I'm walking off the field, hand overhead, yelling hit, and the kid shoots me ten times in the throat. And as I'm screaming at him, what the hell is your problem, what the, what's going on with you, he yells at me, well you have to expect that. I have to expect that. No, what I expected was that I would be playing against a bunch of newbies. What I expected was having a good time teaching people the game of paintball. I did not come here expecting tournament rules, but apparently now I have to. And yes, I found that kid later on in the day, and uh, yeah, I'm not going to go there in this. But what I'm getting at is he came, he came with an e-gun on a day that he knew it was going to be all new players, or pretty much mostly new players. And he wasn't there with an e-gun specifically to, you know, patrol and watch for idiots. No, th this was, he was there to win. He was there to win at all costs. It was all about the W's, racking up the wins. And this is what I see over and over in paintball. And it's a sports thing, but in paintball specifically, where people say that, oh, it's all about honor, it's all about uh, this. And th no. Paintball is a win-at-all-cost mentality. And this hits the recreational field and just and just destroys it. You get a bunch of referees who are local refs who are not used to this kind of thing, and you get players who aren't expecting it. It doesn't go well. The message that I get from these players is that they cannot have any fun, and nobody at the field can have any fun unless you're winning. Whatever it takes to win. Now, I do understand, uh, we are human, and humans are hardwired to win. You don't see a bunch of kids saying, Oh, look at the guy who won the game for our team last night. Why don't you go sit over there with all your winner friends? Hey, buddy, I don't want to hang out with a winner like you. You don't hear this. Nobody's has ever... That's said by nobody, never. I'm, me I'm messing up the meme, but... Nobody talks like that. Nobody ever does. We want to win. We are hardwired to win. But at the same time, we also live the lie. Play a fair game, play an honorable game, have good sportsmanship, but win at all cost. Why do we lie to ourselves like this? I don't know. But this is why I returned to the letter from the guy at Packers.com. When he was saying, remember the commercial about sportsmanship and the, the kid touching the ball, saying he touched the ball, telling the truth, and... What are they teaching our kids? They're not teaching anything that they don't already know. You show up to the field, you show up to any sports field, and this is going to be the attitude you get. We're here to win. We're not here to just, you know, play play a good game. The only time you hear people saying, well, it's not if you win or lose, if you, it's how you, if you win the game. It's not if you win or lose, it's how you play the game. They say that to the losing team. You never hear the winning team say that. Even if the winning team cheated their faces off, because it's all about winning. You know, I brought up Jeremy Psalm earlier. And every time that you mention that name, you know, a bunch of old-timers roll their eyes and they say, Oh, it's so long ago. Come on, just let it go. Jeez. But that's kind of one of my points here. If you don't know what I'm talking about, the uh, there's a couple versions of the story, but um, the general gist of it was 2002 World Cup. Jeremy Psalm, who was playing for... Um, Avalanche, I believe, at the time. Um, yeah, he was apparently deathly, gravely ill. Like, couldn't leave his bed gravely ill. So his teammates, being concerned for his health, uh, went to the tournament anyway and left him and left him at the hotel room alone. Alright. 
fine tournament paintball. Well, Jeremy Solomon did show up to the field. Uh, he was dressed all in black, hiding in the woods and shooting at a, at a team called Ground Zero as they were playing on another field. He was just shooting them in the back. And um, one of the guys from Ground Zero actually threw down and chased him through the woods, dragged him back into the staging area. And yeah, he was punished. He, uh, you know, he was supposedly lost all of his sponsorship, lost his job, lost this. And I say I cry bullshit on that because he was back in paintball a year later, and everybody's like, "Oh, well, he he paid, he did his time." But thing is that it didn't really shock anybody. Everybody just kind of took it in stride of, "Oh, well, you know, boys will be boys." That's just you know it happens. Suck it up. That's what I hear too. Just forget it happened. Suck it up, princess. You know, um, I'm looking at other sports when I think about stuff like this. And I think of Barry Bonds asterisk ball. In fact, the entire steroid era of baseball. How about Bill Belichick taping signals uh, during that one year? And uh, I think he still got coach of the year that year, strangely enough. How about Ben Johnson? Anybody remember him? Gold medalist in the 100 meter, 100 meter sprint? Using steroids? Got stripped a couple days later? Well, if you're ever in England, you want to start a fight? Uh, tell people that the Hand of God goal was overrated. Guarantee you're going to walk away with a bloody nose. Point is that in sports, we will do anything that it takes to win. Because we perceive that as being important. Alright. So let's talk solutions. Because it's one thing to, to just bitch and moan about it. It's another thing to actually come up with solutions. And... I have a solution, and it's one that people are going to soundbite the hell out of and take out of context, but um, what the hell? We're here to start controversy, right? Start, start discussion, right? My solution is actually pretty simple. Let's just drop the pretense. Let's get it over with. Let's admit it. Put it right out there on the table. Everything your parents have ever told you about sportsmanship and honor, it's a lie. Everything. It's not how you play the game. It's about how you win the game. And this goes for all sports, not just paintball. So, I mean, if you permanently injure some kid while playing Pop Warner football, but you still win the game, you can justify that, saying, hey, he knew the risks. He knew exactly what he was getting himself into. I don't care if he was only five, six years old. You want to intimidate a baseball player? Start throwing beanballs at his head. It's cool. They slide into second base. You just uh, step on their hand with your metal spikes. You know, if you're going for a ball in soccer, you know, pretend like the guy just broke your shin as he trips over you and just starts screaming in agony and pain, and then just jump up as soon as the foul is called. You do what it takes to win the game, right? I mean, that's, that's what we do in sports. It's accepted. It's expected. Paintball should really be no different. It's not a game of honor. It's a sport, like every other sport. We should just acknowledge this fact. So, okay, anything that it takes to win, no matter what level you're playing at, justifiable. I mean, hell, let's let, let up the renters. Yeah, let's make them pack it in. They go home, no big deal, it's just a renter. They were just wasting space anyway, right? Go ahead, wipe against that rec team. You know, it doesn't matter. It's just a rec game. Not like, uh, not like we're going to lose money on this. It's not like, it's not like we're going to lose the game or trophies on this. What's the referee going to do? He's going to yell at me for stopping wiping. He's going to throw me off. I'm not going to get a one for one. Tournaments? Pfft, the ref didn't see it. It never happened, right? So uh, do what I've seen people do at other tournaments. Referee starts to come over. You shoot him in the face about a dozen times, and you jump up and you go do. You start your run through. Do five guys before they can catch you. It's all about winning. And of course, the meta game's in effect too. I mean, you know, you make sure you wipe your opponent's faces in the shit that you leave on the carpet. Trash talk before the game, after the game, during the games. After you beat somebody, you just get in their faces. Yeah, we beat your asses. You suck. Sell your gear. Go home. Kill yourself. It's all good, right? It's just a game, isn't it? And if you got a helmet camera on, oh, dude, bonus. Edit the video so that you end up being the victor. It's really easy to do. And this is coming from somebody who's been doing video editing but has never had a single class on how to do it. It's really easy to edit video to make yourself look like a hero. And make sure you do that, too. And the other thing, too, is that eventually they're going to start yelling at you. The opponents are going to yell at you. They're going to say that you're a cheater. 
but you have to hide behind the shield of being an honorable player. If anyone, anyone says that you cheat, you deny it and you turn it around. You tell you, no, no, you're the cheater. I've got video of you cheating. See, I, I shot you when you were going behind this bunker. You came back up clean. You wiped that. Because, I mean, paintball's a game of honor after all, right? you got to keep up the illusion. You just don't want to be branded the cheater, even if you are the biggest cheater on the planet. But if they make it stick, pfft, big deal. I mean, you just tell them to suck it up, buttercup. Bad calls happen. It's not your responsibility to enforce the rules. I mean, blame the refs. Blame the rule makers. Just never let the blame fall on you. Especially if you're winning. Because that's the only important thing. How many W's do you have in your win column? Or... Or we can actually be different. I mean, paintball players keep on talking about how paintball is a better game, how paintball is a different game. Maybe it's time we own that. I think we should. First thing we can do is you have to realize you cannot make people play with a sense of sportsmanship. That's just not realistic. Athletes honestly feel that their job is to push the rules and try not to get caught. How close to the edge can you get? How far over the edge can you dance before the referees rope you back in? So what that means is it ends up being an enforcement issue and an accountability issue. So on the pro levels, I'm going to state this again, we need a professional referee staff. Not a team of players, not a team of locals. We need a professional referee staff that goes to these events. The NFL situation has showed us pretty much why you can't throw the B squad onto your major fields and then hope for the best. This produces a several things. It also produces one thing that's um, a little bit of uh, transparency. Because no longer is this, oh, well, Team A and Team B are, are refing this, uh, this game, and then later on, Team C and Team D, well, A and B play on the same field. You're not going to get that if you have a ref squad, if you have professional referees who are only paid to ref, who are not there to play, who are not in the event to play, and will never be in the event to play. That's what we need. I also believe that we need name and shame. The paintball culture is one really of, well, just forget about it. You know, bad things happen. It's time we stop that. It's time that we actually held a lot of these players accountable. What I seriously want to see a wipe stat. People keep on talking about how paintball needs statistics. I want to see a statistic of wiping. Let's have that. How about a, how about a negative um, point penalty statistic? How many points have you cost your team? And then make it publicly available. Let's put it on the website. Let's put pictures of these guys with all their stats. Hits, paint used, and paint average used, how many wipes they've had, right on the website. I think it's a good idea. And also, like I said, it comes down to an enforcement. So we need harsher rules. How about this for a harsh rule? You wipe a hit, even if it's just bunker rub, you're ejected from the event. Gone. Pack your gear. Go home. You're done. You step foot on the property, we're calling the cops. And people are going to bitch about it because they argue that wiping is just a foul or, you know, it just happens. Well, make it not happen. Granted, I've been playing quite a long time. Nine times, actually even less than that, 99 times out of 100, I know when I got shot. I've also gained the ability to ignore it if I need to. And that's happened several times in which I've actually seen a ball bounce and just keep on playing. But most of these guys, they, they hide behind the idea of, oh, well, you just don't know. You just don't know. Well, then you need to be more aware. It's not a foul. This is a game-breaking situation. You wipe a hit, you can change the face of the game. Everybody knows this. That's why they do it. Why else would they do it if they didn't think that they would get an advantage from it? So let's make, the, let's make the enforcement harsh. Harsh enough to make it so that you wipe a hit. That's it. We can try to start a revolution online. You know, de-emphasize winning at the wreck and scenario levels. But the problem is that this is going to kill the game to some extent. I mean, let's face it. Even if you're just out back shooting hoops with a buddy and you're discussing, I don't know, Nietzsche or um, Rebecca Black or um, something like that. Um, you're just out there just shooting hoops, it's going to turn into a horse game whether you want it to be or not. It's just human nature. I understand that. Again, we're hardwired to win. 
But if the emphasis is taken off of winning, you wouldn't have that as much. But again, a lot of people would stop playing entirely because, well, what's the point if there's no winners and no losers? And I'm actually not a fan of this option myself for this same reason. I think it's kind of sad that um, my sister's kids have played in a t-ball league in which they claim there are no winners, there are no losers, they don't keep track of outs, they don't keep track of foul balls. You just hit see these kids hit the ball and run and have fun. But there's no gameplay involved. And they claim, oh yeah, we're playing a sport. No. <laughs> this is this is day camp. So I'm not I'm not for de emphasizing winning, but it's something that needs to be discussed. Is it even an option? Again though, it does come down to enforcement. Referee or social enforcement doesn't matter. Because um, let's bring back the NFL. What's happening now is pretty much a tamed down version of paintball. You got a bunch of referees who have no staying power. They're being abused by the, by the coaches. They're being abused by the players. If you yell loud enough at these guys, they will buckle because hey, you know this is um, they're going to have a fanboy moment at, at best, or they're just going to completely break down at worst. Although, come to think of it, since I've seen most of this happen in paintball tournaments, too, this is another reason you're not going to see paintball as a TV sport. Unless, of course, you go with sports entertainment, which might be over some people's heads, but that's fine. Now, um, I should also mention this, too. And this was from a uh, the, the bestsportsblog.com. Uh, from some months ago, they, were, they did something called Breaking Down the NFL Referee Lockout. And one of the things they mentioned in the article, and I'm going to read this directly. Um, let's see, who wrote this real quickly, just so I can give uh, Brian Knowles. I'll give him credit for this. Quote, The NFL has decided that their part-time referees need to take an active part in protecting the safety of their players. The, in the league's injury and safety panel has directed the officials to receive concussion awareness training and to remain alert for possible concussions during games. They have the power and responsibility to alert the medical staff to get the player medical attention. With the increased emphasis on player safety and the ever-increasing knowledge of the danger and long-term effects of hidden injuries like concussions, it is absolutely a necessity to have fish officials help out and try to protect the players. End of quote. Again, the sport, the best sports blog .com, the breaking down the NFL referees lockout, Brian Knowles. I mention this because when I was refing paintball a lot, we had two basic rules. The basic rule, number one, number one rule, keep the game safe. Rule number two was to enforce the rules in that order. And I'm going to speak from experience on this one. Players will keep going, even if they've done incredibly horrific things to themselves. I've broken my ankle and kept playing paintball on it because I figured, oh, it's fine. I'll be good. I'm good. You honestly need officials out there who are also thinking in best terms for the players. Because again, we want to play. We want to win. We want to. We'll do whatever it takes. And sometimes that means doing things that are not going to be good for our long-term health. I speak as a guilty party in this. So when you get a player who's breaking the rules, it can also make a really big safety issue. Wiping that may seem like nothing but uh, let's talk about cranking up the guns, overshooting somebody, um, getting so angry at somebody else that you just outright smack him with the back of your gun, you know, butt strike style. Even scenarios, the people, people get caught up in the moment. Um, I know somebody who has a paintball tank, and they were telling me a story about somebody getting a little too involved in the scenario, getting too into the moment, and they threw a hot smoke grenade into the tank and set the inside of the tank on fire. And as all of the people in the tank are frantically opening up doors and trying to bail out, this guy is shooting them at point-blank range and just lighting them up and screaming, You're dead, motherfuckers. You're dead. Get the fuck off my field. This is why you need referees who can watch for safety. This is why you also need to play with some semblance of sportsmanship. Sportsmanship. It's not just playing within the spirit of the law. It's playing with everyone on the field in mind. Sportsmanship means that you care as much about the other players as you do for your own players. And you're watching out for them as well as for your own guys. People do this, but more people want to win first. 
then they concern themselves with how the opponents are doing. That's secondary. You know, we keep on saying that paintball is a different sport. I think it's time we acted like it.